my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net and in this short video we'll look at an exercise that's very simple. It's called meditative rhythms or meditative rhythm. Uh, it's a term borrowed from David Berkman, a jazz pianist and educator in New York City. So I've modified his exercise to suit my taste and answer some students' need through my years of teaching, of course. Uh, this meditative rhythm exercise constitutes one of the greatest ways and simplest ways to warm up for jazz musicians in general, jazz guitarists included. Uh, it puts your mind into good time and can be adjusted for all levels, so the benefits are immediate as your playing gets more into the groove right away in your practice session in your warm-up when you want to start to practice improvisation and comping later in your practice session. Alright, so let's get going. In this video, we'll go through five steps that are gradually more difficult with the exact same exercise. So all you need to do is use your metronome, your instrument, and lots of patience. I usually recommend jazz guitar students warm up with meditative rhythms for the first 5-10% to of their practice session. In the first step, we'll look into equal subdivisions. So you should take your metronome now and set it between, say, 40 and 50. Um, or 40 and 60 BPM, I really like these old cranky metronomes. Uh, and here's what you need. First you set it, say at 50, like this. And then uh, you, you try to play an open string at exactly every click. That's, that's once every click. That's my open D string, right? Pretty simple. Then you, you'll get playing two equal subdivisions. One, two, one, two. So your click is always exactly at the same tempo, but you subdivide it into two parts, and three parts, and five parts, four parts, nine parts, etc., and so on. So use only one open string, and I'll demonstrate this right away. Meditative rhythm with an open D string. One. Easy, right? Two. So on. You could go faster than this if you wanted. So after you can do this fairly well, that you can subdivide one click into equal parts uh, to a certain amount of subdivision, say five, six, seven, eight, you can go uh, as high as you can. I recommend you lower your tempo on your metronome to make the exercise even more difficult. Personally, I find that 40 BPM, beats per minute, is very challenging for me. So I encourage you to do the same. The video here, the demonstration was at 50. Uh, also note that we are not talking about time signature here at all. We're simply talking about one pulse subdivided into equal parts. It's not even like 4-4 four, four, or not even like 5-4 or 3-4. It's none of that. It's not eighth notes either or sixteenth notes or quarter notes. It's simply a pulse subdivided into equal parts. All right, let's jump into the second step now. What we're attempting to do is jump in between the different gears, so-called. So we'll try to jump between the different subdivisions. Here's what we need. First, you set yourself at a comfortable certain tempo and certain subdivision. So for instance, you'll play at 4, so you put your metronome at 50 and you pick 4 equal subdivisions and your mission, shall you accept it, is to go from 4 subdivisions down to 3, still just playing an open string. And you make sure that you actually do not trip over your own shoelaces, so to speak. Make sure that you make the subdivision and it doesn't get you much time get, uh, to readjust to the new subdivision, right? So that's like your new gear. So I'll give you some examples coming up. Some of them are really easy. Some of them are really difficult for me too. It's like going from five subdivisions down to two and then back to five. This proves to be challenging because when you go back and forth, you always think that it's faster or it's slower than it actually is, right? So let's do some examples right now. Jumping in between gears, open D string still. I'm gonna do five subdivisions and go down to two. One, two, three, four, five, one. Right? 
Let's do another example, four and three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. pretty hard for me so this is where you see you go from four to three and you're always thinking that the four is faster or slower than it actually is right so once you can do this comfortably jumping between gears I would uh, attempt to challenge yourself and jump say from five to two back to three and up uh, you'll become a master at this because you will have internalized how fast each subdivision really is so one of the things that's interesting is just playing an open string you're playing one note at a time still so that's my point is if you want to bring up the challenge, raise the heat a little bit, and the next step we'll start playing, adding improvisations and scales to this. So the third step of the med meditative rhythms exercise will add a soloing part, even if it's just a melodic part to your playing, so say a scale or an arpeggio or a pattern, something like that. Everything that we've covered so far still applies, meaning that you're aiming to do equal subdivisions, so of one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, etc. And you're also going to attempt to switch between gears whenever you can. But one of the great ways to test yourselves to see if you can improvise or at least be within the confines of a scales, uh, of some of the scales you know to do this. So be careful. This is not an exercise for beginners. At this point, you need to be very much in control of whatever scale you're doing and whatever position you're doing and whatever gear of the meditative rhythms you're attempting, right? Let me demonstrate a, a few things and I'll talk through uh, the different examples as I play uh, the demonstration, all right? Meditative rhythms, step three. So here's an example of using a C major scale with five subdivisions. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Try to go from seven down to two. we can add improvisation so I'll be in subdivisions of four improvising freely and then I will go into subdivisions some divisions of three improvising freely <laughs> you're comfortable doing meditative rhythms say doing three subdivisions and going up and down a certain scale or four subdivisions like I just did and you're starting to be comfortable switching between subdivisions say from three to five and so on um, if you are within a scale right now let yourself go and improvise totally freely like I've done this is more or less uh, what I've been doing in the demonstration sometimes you hear parts of a scale and arpeggio uh, but I wanted to see if I could push myself and really play freely any melodic idea that comes to mind while strictly focusing on the timing, right? That's what we're attempting to do in improvisation. You should also attempt to do this. Put all your energies into the rhythms and don't think of the melodic choices you're making. Just think I'm in four subdivisions going down to three and so on. Uh, please note you can still be doing this with higher subdivisions. So say if you're subdividing eight or nine 
and you're tempting to go down to five, that can prove really challenging if you're improvising at the same time. Now for the fourth step of meditative rhythms, we'll be starting to work with accents. I don't want to, to spend too much time on this because if you're advanced enough to work with these, uh, you already kind of get it, right? Kind of. So I'll give you two examples where I'd like to use accents personally in, in meditative rhythms. Say I'm playing five subdivisions. Instead of going one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, I may decide to play five as two and three. So I would say one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, uh, sorry. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. It's still, um, it's still lining up to summing up to five, right? But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing an accent at every one, right? So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Of course, all the three pre previous steps can still apply. You're aiming at equal subdivisions. You're attempting to jump between gears. Say you're subdivide, subdividing your five in a certain pattern, you might want to go down to two and back up with a different pattern. Also, you're attempting to add melodic improvisation freely, whether uh, if you can be completely free or within the scale, right? So working with accents is very interesting. And one I like to use for accent also is seven. So instead of doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, what, et cetera, I do one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. So here's some demonstration of that, then I will let you go. Meditative rhythms, step four, adding accents. So I will use the five first as one, two, one, two, three, okay? One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Also remember, you can switch gears. Now I was just doing five, you could go down to seven, go up to seven and down to two and etc. if you want to do that. And that's it. So as a last and fifth step, I will not cover in this video right now because I, I don't want it to, the video to be too long. I will encourage you to look into polyrhythms at some point if you get really good with this exercise. So you see through meditative rhythms, we have only used subdivisions of one click, of one pulse, right? But you may subdivide two pulses. For instance, you might decide that your unit of measurement is two clicks from the metronome. See if you can subdivide two beats into one equal part, and then two beats into two equal parts, two beats into three equal parts, and so on. This is a very advanced style of exercise to pick. So if you're trying to use the previous four steps, like improvising with it and stuff, with polyrhythms, it gets really hard. Uh, if you're advanced enough, I'm sure you'll be covering this on your own. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this exercise really helps you have more solid time and groove better. And I challenge you to add this to your practice session as a warm-up only for the next month or so, and you'll see the results. So once again, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher, and I'll see you in the next video. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel for more blue shirts, black background, and jazz guitar talk. Take care. Talk to you soon.